Well, this week, all eyes will be on Iran, as a detailed report on the country is expected to be released by the U.N. nuclear watchdog, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Some portions of that report have already leaked out and show what many world leaders suspected, which is that Tehran is, in fact, working to develop their abilities to create atomic bombs. Iran says this is totally false, though the report has still not yet been released. Chatter has already started about possible sanctions against Iran by some in this country. And others in Israel say a military attack against Iran may be needed to let Iran know that developing these capabilities is just not acceptable. But both Russia and China say that is a very bad idea. Here's Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Our view on this issue is well known. An attack would be a serious mistake with very grave consequences. We can see proof of that every day when we see how problems are being solved close to Iran, be it Iraq, Afghanistan or other countries in the region. Military interference only leads to a multiple rise in deaths. I want to talk about the implications of this report, what's in it and what it could mean for the future. Ivan Eland is a senior fellow at the Independent Institute and is here with me. And Ivan, on one hand, this is nothing new. People have been saying for years, uh, maybe even more than a decade, they've been talking about the fact that Iran wants to develop its nuclear capabilities. Is this report um, a big deal even? Well, I think it might be a little bit bigger deal than in the past because they've said this report apparently says that they have the design and the capability to do it. Now, they make the caveat that they haven't necessarily started down that road. They had made a decision. So they could do what Japan has done, because Japan has taken it all the way up to actually building a nuclear weapon, and they haven't done it. They've shown they have the capability, et cetera. Maybe that's what Iran is trying to do. Maybe Iran will never build a weapon, so we don't know. But I think uh, what the foreign minister said there is absolutely correct. There's no good military option here. If you want to make sure you get all this stuff, you have to launch a ground invasion, which would make the invasion of Iraq look nice, right? I mean, it looked easy. Uh, Iran's a much bigger country, the terrain, uh, the people uh, there are not in a, a good mood towards America, et cetera. You'd have a lot, of, a lot of problems. And now, of course, they could attack by air. Israel or the United States could do that. And that's the, that's the fear, I think. Uh, but there's just no good option. Uh, they're, tr they're putting this uh, uh, facility uh, inside this uh, mountain uh, near the holy city of Qum. And I think that's what's generating these reports from the West. I think you're right. There's a certain amount of hype, uh, uh, you know, related to this. And the reason for that is this uh, facility, once they bury it in this mountain, you can't get to it with even bunker-busting weapons, or it's very difficult. And so, uh, it, but even if they don't do that, it's very hard to hit all the targets because we don't know where they are. And despite this report not being released, there are certainly a wide array of ideas uh, of how um, different le world leaders should respond. In this country, there has already been talk, as I mentioned, of sanctions. Uh, there are also leaders in Israel who say military action is needed. But I want to play you something uh, that was said over the weekend by GOP presidential candidate Ron Paul. I would say treat them differently, and uh, it'd be less threatening. But well, to, to be, be say, when you say treat them differently, don't put sanctions on them. So, so what's how are we going to persuade them not to pursue a nuclear weapon? Well, maybe being uh, offering friendship to them. All right, so this is kind of a sweet idea. You know, let's put the past behind us and move forward together. Is this realistic? Well, it probably isn't realistic because the world leaders won't do it, but uh, they think sanctions are necessary. Sanctions are going to have no effect on this because Iran is in a rough neighborhood. They have Saudi Arabia, Israel, other countries that really don't like them there. And therefore, and, the, and of course, the, they want to keep the U.S. out. And they, everybody learned from the Iraq war uh, that, and in the Libyan case, that if you give up your nuclear weapons, you know, you're liable to get invaded So that by uh, the United States or some other power. So I think this is of a vital interest to Iran, so they're not going to respond even to the sanctions. But I think what we should do is the person that you had on your uh, uh, film earlier, Lyndon Johnson, had to deal with this in China uh, when Mao and the Chinese got nuclear weapons. Mao made direct threats to nuke the United States. And of course, Lyndon Johnson explored military options, et cetera. And of course, they didn't take uh, the Chinese nuclear weapons out, probably for the same reasons that they didn't know where they were, like Iran. So I think you can deter this. We have thousands of nuclear warheads. Russia has thousands of nuclear warheads. Iran will have a few, and they haven't even 
put them on a missile yet. A missile design takes a lot of technology, et cetera. So they've shown that they can design a warhead that will fit on a missile. Getting the missile over here, we've seen North Korea had a lot of problems with that. So we're not in the panic mode yet. It seems to me, at least from what I'm reading, that Israel is the country that is sort of making the strongest threats against uh, what could be coming out of Iran. Um, I want to get your take, though. What about these claims? Uh, to the UN officials, or to the yeah, officials with the United Nations, that it was actually foreign scientists who stepped in and shared this knowledge. There was a, there was a headline uh, in the Washington Post uh, that basically said that it was these foreign officials that gave assistance to help Iran, um, you know, come come over at, and get these capabilities. What do you think about this? Well, there probably was some foreign help. I mean, uh, the United States helped uh, India get nuclear weapons. Uh, and probably helped Israel get nuclear weapons. So people, there are nuclear transfers, and, th and that's a bad idea, but, and, and you want to try to limit that. But the problem is you have uh, free-ranging people like uh, A.Q. Khan from Pakistan who is basically selling a lot of nuclear secrets, et cetera. So some people will sell secrets just to make money. Other times, uh, intelligence agencies, the Iranian intelligence agencies out there looking for technology. So the, it's a kind of a leaky sieve. I mean, this technology is proliferating. This technology is not even new anymore. Remember, the atom first atomic bomb was blown off in 1945. So uh, we're going to have to expect some proliferation. But I think you know, we need to focus on containing it, and if we can't contain, we need to deter an attack. And there's no reason to, to say that Iran's uh, leaders are crazy. In fact, they've been very pragmatic. And if there was ever a radical, it was Mao Zedong in China uh, at the time, because it was in the middle of cu cultural revolution, et cetera. So I think the Iranians can be deterred from attacking, certainly the United States on the other side of the world, and probably from Saudi and certainly from Israel, they have 200, 200 to 400 nuclear weapons already, and they are very capable aircraft to deliver them. So uh, Iran is not is not probably going to uh, use these weapons in, uh, in anger. Uh, Ivan, we've been talking about sort of the reaction from different leaders around the world to this report and the parts of it that have been leaked. But there are some, and I want to mention this, there are some who would argue, you know, uh, this was totally predictable, these reactions. Uh, you know, that the U.S. and Israel have been beating the drums of war against Iran for, for a long time. They want to feed the military contractors. They want to um, keep this country in some sort of perpetual war. That is a criticism that, that many are saying in response to this. What about that notion? Does that have any validity? Well, I think there are pressures. We saw that in Libya. Uh, we saw it in the second Iraq war, et cetera. Uh, we've seen it in the long-term occupation of Afghanistan. Uh, I think what's really driving this is the Iranians are moving that facility into the mountain. And once it goes in there, it's going to be very difficult to take it down. Uh, and so I think that's why there's a lot of bluster. I think that's probably why they're releasing this report to put more pressure on Iran to get it to give up, up, up its weapons program. But I don't see them doing that. So I think you're going to have to move to a... Uh, a, a strategy of deterrence. Nobody's saying that right now, but that's probably what you're going to have to do. Based on your research at the Independent Institute, based on history, uh, what are your predictions in terms of how the various countries respond once this report is released? Well, I think Israel is going to be very strident, and uh, you're going to see bellicose statements. I think uh, the United States is probably less enthusiastic about that given the recent history of U.S. military endeavors. And I think Obama has always been a little bit reluctant to, to uh, attack Iran. Iran is a totally different uh, nut to crack than Iraq or whatever. I mean, like I say, you'd have to invade on the ground to get, this, uh, get these weapons out of there, or uh, not weapons, but facilities. And I think, um, uh, you know, basically, the, even a lot of military people would say there are not many good military options except a full-blown invasion. I don't know anybody who's going, uh, going to, uh, uh, you know, advocate that. Now, if Israel does attack or the U.S. does launch airstrikes, I think uh, you instantly turn the country into an anti-U.S. cauldron again. Now, a lot of the people are fed up with the current regime, and they're not happy, especially you see the Arab Spring. Iran is in a very weak position. Its, it's ally, uh, Syria, is going, you know, may, the government there, there may fall, fall may, over there. Uh, what you've got uh, in Iran, the Arab Spring can't be in, encouraging to the Iranian leaders. So I think, uh, you know, Iran is susceptible to pressure. Uh, whether they'll give up their nuclear weapons, though, is another matter, or their nuclear program, I should say. And, and, for, we, and we need to be cautious here. Remember what happened in the Iraq thing? We can't conclusively say that they have a nuclear 
uh, program that's that's uh, for weapons, but it looks like they might. But even if they do, military action is probably not uh, useful. No matter what, this will certainly be one of the hot topics. I have a feeling for the upcoming presidential debates, as we see. Uh, senior fellow with the Independent Institute, Ivan Eland.